Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today is a topic that one of my subscribers requested to do an overview of hashing objects in SAS. Now, this topic may not be as familiar to some of you, but you may find it beneficial when you want to look up certain values within a table. So maybe you have heard of VLOOKUP in Excel, where you have one column that you're searching through to try to look up information. Maybe you have worked with dictionaries in Python, where you have key value pairs or objects in JavaScript. All of this helps us retrieve data based off of some criteria. So if you are in a role or if you're a student needing to retrieve some data based off of a key or an ID column, this will be a beneficial tutorial for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So our agenda for today is we're gonna actually define what this hash iterator object is and then look at some code. So a hash iterator object is used to store and search data based on lookup keys. As I just mentioned, very similar to dictionaries in Python, if you have experience with that language where you have key value pairs, or if you have performed VLOOKUPs in Excel. Object keys and data values are stored as variables within a data step. So you're gonna be creating a data step here you're going to be able to store the key and the data as variables. So you're going to be able to use variables that already exist in your data in order to retrieve the information that you're looking for. So some benefits is that you're able to store and retrieve data, which I may do a tutorial on in the future, replace, remove data, or create a data set that only has data based off of a criteria. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. How to create a data set that only has data based off of a certain criteria using a variable in the data set to look up values. So let's look at some examples to kind of drive this home because this can be a little abstract. So say for instance, you have one data set with store numbers and another data set with retail purchases across all of the stores for the year. You can use the store number as a lookup hash object known as the key, as long as it's unique. And you can use the column called sales to grab sales that are greater than $2 million for the year based off of that key. Okay, so what you're interested in retrieving is going to be called the values and the ID number or the column that you're using to look up the information is going to be known as your key. Keep in mind, you can have more than one key. You can look up more than one value. So say, for instance, you want to look up sales and profit. You definitely can do that. The only thing about your keys is that they must be unique. So as long as you have store number and let's say state and date, all of that is going to be unique across all three of those variables. So make sure that your key stays unique. Another example of this, say for instance, you have patient IDs in one data set or in the same data set, and you want to retrieve certain payment information for payments that have not been paid in the last 20 days, right? You can use that patient ID to search through the data set to grab all of those rows, okay? So this is some examples in when you may want to use this type of object. So let's dive right into how we can create this in SAS. And we're gonna be able to hop into SAS Studio on demand for academics to kind of see the code as well. So in this case, the first step is going to be declare and instantiate an object. So I'm gonna declare an object, right, called my iter. In this my iter object, I'm gonna instantiate a new object and I'm just gonna call this new object H, okay? So instantiation is like initializing, is you wanting to start with a whole new object. So not only do you need to tell SAS, hey, declare that I am going to use this, but also create a new one for me, okay? So I'm creating a new object called my iter, okay? And I'm declaring a hash object called hitter. And then stored in this my iter object is a new object that I can now refer to as H. 
This is very similar to object-oriented programming, especially for those who have Python. I highly recommend that you look, look up OOP or object-oriented programming if you want more details, okay? So once we declare, right, now we're going to create another object called my hash to read in some data and then declare the corresponding key. So in this case, I have this nice little if statement, the if then do, right? So if I'm on the first observation, that's what that underscore in and underscore means. So I'm going to start right at the first row, right at the first observation. Then I want my key to be of length five and it's a character. And I want to declare this my hash object. It is going to have a constructor or an argument pass through it. And this argument is going to set the data set equal to whatever data set I want from my work library. So you have read in all of the data sets that you need. Maybe you have data on fiscal year one, fiscal year two, fiscal year three, fiscal year four. You can call work.fiscal year one, work.fiscal year two. Whatever the name of the data set is, you can pass through. And then I'm going to declare or instantiate a new object called my hash. Okay. And then with this my hash object, I'm going to have two statements here. I'm going to define the key and I'm going to be done. So this is a common method that once you have defined the key and you have defined data, as you'll see in the next step, you need to run the method to close it out. Okay. So starting at the first observation, Make sure that my key doesn't exceed a length of five because I want to save up memory. Declare that I have this hash object called my hash that's going to read in a data set. I'm going to instantiate this instance of my hash. And then I'm going to do my hash dot define key method. So object dot method, object dot method. And it's like that in a lot of programming languages, like I said. So in Python, you can have data frame dot head, which is object dot method, or data frame dot tail, which is object dot method. So this is using this object method going on here. So after we do that, like I said, it's within a data step, right? So the key and the data that you want are variables that exist in a data set. And I have a data set here called work.customer, and it has information of customer ID, the state, as well as the number of visits they've made to the store. So I'm going to create a data set called out, and I'm going to start at that first observation. I want to set a link for all of the variables in this data set. So my ID, which is going to be the ID of the customer is going to be of length of five in a character. Their state information is abbreviated for two characters and their visit shouldn't exceed three as a number. And I'm going to declare, notice I have that H coming from the previous step. So I'm declaring this hash object called H. I'm calling it back because I already instantiated it. And I'm gonna pass in work.cust because this is stored in my customer data. And then I want to order it by the ID or by the key. So this order, yes, is going to order it by the key in ascending order. So now once I have my H, I'm going to instantiate the H that I called above. I'm going to define the key, which I want my customer ID to be the key. And the data that I want to retrieve is information about how many visits and their corresponding customer ID. And then I'm going to wrap it up with a done. This call missing here, if you do not initialize a value for the key or data, you have to put this in here to avoid errors written out to your log, okay? So in this case, I'm not saying start with state equals Alabama or start with ID 001. I don't know what the first ID is. I didn't instantiate an initial value. So because of that, I'm going to say that they're uninitialized. Just start at the top, okay? After that, I'm creating this nice little do loop to filter for the data that I want. And I'm going to use this dot first and dot next method, okay? Where dot first means start at the first observation. 
and dot next means move to the next observation. So in this case, I'm creating or instantiating an object, initializing it called iter dot first, and I'm storing that as RC. Okay. So while RC is equal zero, so start at the very, very top. If the visits that someone has made to my store is greater than two, then output them to the data set. Okay, and all of this is still within this whole data step here. I haven't closed off the data step yet. So if they have made more than two visits to my store, output it, and then move to the next observation, right? Then I'm going to end that do loop and then run this entire data step. Okay, so I shall only get visits out that have been greater than two. So when I proc print the data step that I just created, I should only get visits out and their corresponding ID, right, for those visits. So let's actually look at this in SAS, okay? And it's going to be the same code here. So you can kind of see what I have done. So the first thing that I have done in this case is created some fake data of data lines. You can already have an existing data set stored in your work library. And if you expand libraries on the left-hand side, your work library is here, okay? So in this case, I have ID, I have the state that they're in and the number of visits, okay? So here I'm creating and instantiating my object called my iter if this initialization happens here. And then I'm doing a nice little if statement. So start at the first observation. I want in this my hash object to read any data set from my work library, okay? Then I want to initialize it. And this my hash object, I have a key column that I'm going to create. And then I'm just going to close it out with a done. Then in this case, I have a new temporary data set called out. And now I'm gonna call this H object here, okay? This is saying data set, and I'm calling the work.cust, okay? And in this case, I'm defining the key to be the ID column because I want to look up by customer ID. I'm defining the data that I want to return as the visits in the ID. And then once I get that information, I'm closing it out. I'm putting in all the variables here because I have no initial value. I am then filtering in this do loop for visits that are greater than two, and then I'm gonna print it out, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna print it out. I get my nice little results and I have my ID. Notice that it's ordered by ascending ID in this case, and I have visits five, four, and 16. So it did not print out this visit here because they were not greater than two times, okay? So this is how you can output a data set by looking up a certain ID column and retrieving all of the IDs associated with a certain criteria within your data set, okay? So that is all for this introduction to hashing iterator objects. Please like, comment, subscribe to Learning with Jelly. Thank you so, so, so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.